Mom didn't mean any harm, so forgive her. You understand that, right, as my wife? Looking back now, I remember that it was my husband who chose the date for our wedding registration. I remember feeling a shiver down my spine when I thought that from now on, all our wedding anniversaries might become a day for my mother-in-law, Flora. My birthday being Jason's wedding anniversary, this is not a filial piety. I'm happy though. My husband and I had our first wedding anniversary, but it turned out to be a terrible day. I thought to myself that we didn't need an anniversary if it was going to be like this. My name is Esther, and I'm 26 years old. I work for a pharmaceutical company. My husband Jason and I met in college, where he was my senior. We dated, and after he started working and saved up some money, we moved in together when I started my job the next year. We got married a year after that. My husband and I never fought, and he was helpful with household chores, so our relationship was harmonious. We had discussed having children once our jobs settled down, so we were not particularly in a rush and enjoyed our newly wedded life. Then we welcomed our first wedding anniversary, but the anticipated celebration turned out to be a far cry from what we had imagined. What? We're going out on our anniversary? Six months ago, we booked a hotel with a beautiful night view for our anniversary, but my husband is trying to leave the house three hours earlier than our reservation time, so I thought I got the reservation time wrong and spoke up. We're going shopping with mom until the hotel reservation time. Today is mom's birthday, the most important anniversary of the year. Wait, today is our wedding anniversary. When I said that to my husband, he looked surprised. I know, but mom's birthday is more important. Our wedding anniversary can be celebrated tomorrow at home, right? We're short on time, so let's go now. My husband said that and left without looking back. At that moment, I understood that the hotel I had reserved for our anniversary was taken over by my mother-in-law and realized that my husband was a mama's boy. I'm going back to my parents' house. I left a note for my husband on the dining table at home and went back to my parents' house. My husband hurried to bring me back. I was wrong. Oh, I can't do anything without you, Esther. Please, come back. My mother and I were surprised to see my husband kneeling and screaming on the doorstep of my parents' house, and my mother and I rushed him into the house. I promise to prioritize you next year. You're the most important thing to me. Believe me, it's not a lie. My husband explained tearfully, but... I don't remember letting my daughter marry into a family that would make her cry. Go home quietly. In our single-parent household, my mother, who played the role of a father, stood in front of my kneeling husband. Esther is already mine the moment she got married. What I do or don't do is none of your business anymore. My husband, frustrated by my mother's unyielding attitude, even as he kneeled, grabbed my wrist strongly and pulled me with force, causing me to fall to the ground. Say that again? My mother confronted my husband with anger, and he, intimidated, thrust his hands forward and pushed her away. However, my mother, who had trained her core strength, didn't flinch. Although my husband hesitated for a moment, he mistakenly thought that his strength was just insufficient at that time and reached out to her again. Yet, my mother swiftly dodged his attack, grabbed the back of his neck, and threw him two meters away with one hand. My mother is small and short, but with tremendous strength, she blew away my husband who, in a humiliating posture, was left stunned and bewildered, not knowing what had happened, and even lost control of his bladder. It's no wonder he's surprised. My mother was a former wrestler. My mother achieved numerous accomplishments and was a well-known athlete in our hometown. However, she retired due to an injury and now she runs a sports chiropractic clinic. She also supported me, her only daughter, to go to college. That mother at the wedding wore a long dress and appeared to be a plump middle-aged woman at first glance. However, in the summer when she wore a t-shirt, some people were surprised by her figure. I had told my husband that my mother was a former wrestler. But since it was a career before I was born, neither of us knew that she was a full-fledged former athlete. 
Now, my husband is suffering at the hands of my mother right in front of me. My husband knelt again while crying and promised not to do anything violent or make me cry again, and my mother made him write a pledge. When I calmed down, I thought that he wasn't cheating or a gambler, and if I was the most important bride, I would try to believe in him again and return to the apartment. After that, we continued to live a peaceful life, and we were able to save a little money, so my husband and I discussed whether to buy a house or have a baby, among other things. However, a completely different future awaited us than that plan. It all started when my father-in-law suddenly passed away, and unexpectedly, the idea of living together with my mother-in-law came up. While I was at work, I received a call from my mother-in-law saying that my father-in-law had collapsed and she needed me to come to the hospital immediately. I left work early and rushed to the hospital, but unfortunately, my father-in-law had already passed away. My mother-in-law was sitting next to him, looking crestfallen. When my husband saw my exhausted mother-in-law, he knelt down to me. I can't leave my elderly mother alone, so please let her move in with me. After seeing my husband pleading with tears, I couldn't just leave him like that. So, I decided to consider positively living with my mother-in-law. To be honest, I understood that I was not welcomed as a daughter-in-law by my mother-in-law, so I was only anxious about living together. However, when I talked to my husband about my anxiety regarding living together, You're cold. You're a heartless person. He would say every time. I wanted words from him that would dispel such worries, but every time I consulted with my husband about it, his response was always rebellious and even intimidating, saying things like, Talking back to my parents. I also lost my father in a traffic accident when I was in high school. So I thought I understood the pain and sadness of losing a parent more than others. Therefore, I wanted to support my beloved husband. And without thinking of any inconvenience, I thought that as long as there is love, everything will be fine and things might change if we have a child. I followed my husband and decided to live together with my mother-in-law. My mother-in-law looks younger than her age, but she's far from being a lady of high character. She's more like a shrew, and I've always been uncomfortable with her, as we are completely opposite types of people. On the other hand, my late father-in-law was a quiet man who retired early from his job as a teacher and started a restaurant, fulfilling his childhood dream. During the day, the restaurant served set meals, and at night, it operated as a bar with my father-in-law cooking and serving drinks. My mother-in-law helped with the bar at night and was known as a caring mother figure in the neighborhood, becoming somewhat of a local celebrity. However, after my father-in-law passed away, my mother-in-law decided to inherit the business, and my husband and she were so busy with all the procedures that they didn't even have time to grieve. So I silently took care of all the household chores to help them in any way I could. Although they were both grieving initially, their behavior started to change once my father-in-law's life insurance money was deposited. What is this? Why do you keep serving such salty food? What will you do if I collapse from high blood pressure? If I become bedridden, you'll have to take care of me. And I'll make you work hard, so be prepared. Yes, yes, here we go again. Though I thought that, I kept eating without saying a word. My expression unchanged. If I eat this meal, will I become as fat as you, Esther? If I get fat like you, I won't be able to walk around town. It would be embarrassing. As for the husband sitting next to me, I can see his shoulders trembling, so he must be suppressing laughter without making a sound. As for the mother-in-law sitting in front of my husband, she seems satisfied after making a sarcastic comment towards me. She is smirking while adding hot water from the pot into the soup cup. Furthermore, the two of them have started to eat out or order delivery for lunch instead of touching the meals I prepare while I'm at work during the day. Well, if they're not going to eat, it's not a waste of ingredients, and if I don't have to cook, it saves me some effort too. If you don't need to eat, just say so. When I said that, my husband replied, It's your fault that the food tastes bad. He started making ridiculous accusations. Furthermore, my mother-in-law's constant nagging towards me doesn't stop, so I sought my husband's advice to make it stop. 
What kind of person are you to say mean things to my aging mother, who doesn't have much time left? He completely disregards my words. It seems like my husband, now without a father, feels the pressure as the only son and thinks he has to step up. My once gentle husband has undergone a complete transformation. And today, once again. Do we really need to eat such a tasteless meal? Of course, by tasteless meal, he refers to the food I cooked. Both my husband and mother-in-law, as soon as they had a significant amount of money, started treating me like a housekeeper or servant. Just when I thought things couldn't get worse, now my husband has quit his job without consulting me, and I'm truly troubled by it. When I ask why he quit his job, trying to understand the reasons, Because I don't have to worry about retirement. That's all he said completely ignoring anything else I had to say. As for my mother-in-law, she has been engaging in behaviors completely unsuitable for her, such as inviting luxury car dealers to our home despite not even having a driver's license, or going around looking at real estate for condominium investments. I've been worried that they might do something reckless or irresponsible, and they would make excuses, using my late father-in-law's grief as a justification for not working and increasing their frequency of going out to drink during the day. If I were to voice my complaints about their late-night outings, All I have left is my mother. I want to take my mother, who has a shorter time left than us, to various places. As someone who grew up with only one parent, you should understand my feelings, right? And he would make excuses, appealing to emotions, and I started to feel like it was pointless no matter what I said. Furthermore, my mother-in-law, who had never been exposed outside entertainment before, started indulging in excessive spending, which only got worse over time. As a result, I decided to completely separate our finances as a couple and began preparing to leave this house. As I let their selfish behavior go for a few months, before I knew it, our wedding anniversary was approaching. We can celebrate our wedding anniversary together this year, right? Of course, I didn't have any expectations, but just to be sure, I asked my husband. Oh, I forgot we were married. I mistook you for a housekeeper. He laughed, and my mother-in-law, who overheard the conversation, also laughed along. Your anniversary has no value whatsoever. They both laughed together. At that moment, I felt it was hopeless, and I made up my mind to end it all. Flora, you're always so beautiful. On Flora's birthday, I would like to organize a grand celebration with all my heart. Would you entrust me with the preparations for a party? In terms of space, we have the bar that you inherited from your father, and we can invite the neighbors to make it a fantastic party. When I expressed my desire to celebrate my mother-in-law's birthday in an extravagant way, she became pleased and said, Yes, I am a character loved by everyone. If we're going to do it, let's do it grandly. Make sure it doesn't turn into a tacky party. I'm counting on you. She added, and with those words, she entrusted the birthday party to me. I couldn't stop laughing when I imagined that day, which was both our wedding anniversary and my mother-in-law's birthday. I had been entrusted with the keys to the bar, which would serve as the venue, and I spent several days decorating the room. Even my mother-in-law, who occasionally came to check on the progress, seemed satisfied with the outcome. Once all these people join the party, they should understand just how cherished I am by my family, she said with a smirk. Seeing my mother-in-law in that state, I couldn't help but smirk as well. Our wedding anniversary turned into my mother-in-law's birthday celebration. The weather was perfect, and rumors spread that there would be free food and drinks. As a result, the bar became lively, reminiscent of the days when my father-in-law was alive. The birthday song played in the bar, and my mother-in-law looked delighted. Considering that the venue was a bar and the lighting felt dim, and as the night grew late, I decided to switch on the ambient lighting. Ah! What? As the room started to become slightly brighter, small screams could be heard throughout the bar, which served as the venue. And then the scene inside the venue turned into something truly horrifying. Ah! Bugs! 
Yes, I had arranged for the venue to be filled with bugs for this special occasion. From the perspective of someone who dislikes insects, it would be nothing short of a scene from hell. I work in a department of the pharmaceutical company where we research insect repellents and medications effective against insects. Every day we engage in research and development to determine which insects can be targeted and which medications are effective against them. I borrowed eggs from the company's laboratory, raised them carefully myself and timed their emergence for this day. I raised them with great care, ensuring their successful emergence. As someone who sees insects every day and sometimes even nurtures them, the bugs flying around the room now appear to be my adorable children, celebrating their birth. From the chaotic scene that ensued, the customers began fleeing one after another, leaving only me, my mother-in-law, and my husband behind. With heavy breathing, my mother-in-law Flora asked me, What are those disgusting bugs? Isn't it because you neglected to clean and left it unattended for so long that the bugs appeared? I informed her. The bugs I brought from the lab were specifically programmed for research purposes and unable to reproduce through mating. They were intentionally designed to have short lifespans, so after about a week, they would naturally die off. However, my mother-in-law, overwhelmed by the disgust, and the fact that her own birthday party had been ruined was shocked and collapsed. What have you done? Concerned about his collapsed mother, my husband yelled at me, and I responded. I don't know anything. It's because you neglected the important shop that my father-in-law left behind. That's why we ended up with this outcome. That day, as I recalled the trembling face of my fearful mother-in-law, I couldn't stop laughing. It brought a sense of relief to my chest. I thought that by doing this, I had finally settled the score for my mistreatment I had endured from my mother-in-law in the past. However, little did I know that there was still more to come. The next day, my mother-in-law, instead of simply cleaning up the infested bar, came up with the idea of burning it down entirely. My mother-in-law couldn't forget the benefits of the insurance money she received when her husband passed away, so she came up with the idea that if the bar burned down, she could get rid of the pests, and also collect the fire insurance money, killing two birds with one stone. And so, in the middle of the night, she went to the bar and spread gasoline around. However, before she set fire to the house, a witness became suspicious of a middle-aged woman spreading something in the middle of the night and contacted the police. The police rushed to the scene and arrested my mother-in-law before she could set fire to the house. She was arrested for attempted arson rather than arson, and given her malicious intent to obtain insurance money, she was sentenced to imprisonment. I met my mother-in-law only once after she was arrested. And at that moment, I said sarcastically to my mother-in-law, Didn't you know that insurance won't cover it if you set fire to something? My mother-in-law's face at that time was a look of bitter regret, and finally my heart felt clear. And for me, there was still revenge to be had against my husband. Even though my own mother had been through something like this, my husband didn't seem to care at all, and was lying on the living room sofa relaxing. So I spoke up. Do you remember the contents of the agreement we wrote at my parents' house before? Since you couldn't keep your end of the deal, let's get divorced, and of course, I will be seeking compensation. I said that and handed my husband the divorce papers. He eagerly filled them out and signed them as if he had been waiting for this. Fortunately, we did not have any children, so there was no need for a custody battle. We didn't have much to divide, so after deducting the lawyer fees, I received a small amount of damages that left me slightly better off. With that, the divorce was finalized without much trouble. Actually, I had hired a detective and found out that my husband had been cheating on me with another woman for quite some time. I had gathered various evidence to gain an advantage in the divorce, but without checking the contents of the certified mail, my ex-husband quickly paid the lump sum for the compensation that we had proposed. Thinking that this would finally bring an end to my painful married life, I was determined to start my second life. And then, I went back to my mother's house, who had supported me in the background all along, and lived with her again, taking it easy. And one day, about half a year after the divorce, the phone at my mother's house rang. It's me, Jason. 
Hey, let's start over again, shall we? I was surprised by the sudden news and was further exasperated when my ex-husband mentioned getting back together, even though I hadn't asked for it. Then he started talking about what happened after we got divorced. It turned out that he had been cheating on me with multiple women, starting a little before our divorce, and one of them happened to be the daughter of a certain company's president. He thought that if he married the woman, he would be the next president of the company. He made a show of being wealthy with the inheritance he received from his father, and managed to lead her to believe that he belonged to the same social class. However, when they considered marriage, it seems that the parents of the woman, who is the daughter of the president, conducted a background check on my ex-husband, and found out that he was unemployed and that his mother was a criminal. As a result, they called off the engagement. Of course, my ex-husband, who was dissatisfied with this, threatened to demand compensation for breaking off the engagement. However, he was told that he could be sued for marriage fraud instead. Unable to compete with real wealthy people, he fled. Furthermore, he spent money recklessly and ended up receiving an inheritance tax payment notice from the government. He came to me seeking help because he couldn't pay the taxes. However, I... Your tears and apologies are too cheap and have no value whatsoever. If you don't disappear right now, I'll call the police. I said that and sent him away. If he sells the remaining land and buildings, he should be able to come up with the money, and it's no longer my concern. I also obtained testimony of his infidelity during our marriage from my ex-husband, and I'm getting ready to claim compensation from the president's daughter or whoever she is, so I'm going to be busy again. I'm not expecting a lot of money, but if I receive some unexpected income, I plan to go on a trip with my mother.